Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. How to contemplate more on nature means that's from the teaching that we said from the night before and many times before that is that Allah shows us an example. When we want to understand submission then Allah inspired that to nature look to my creation and see how nature submits and insan doesn't. That nature if you take a tree and you hit the tree it gives you fruits, it doesn't hit you back in the head. So it means that nature is teaching us how to be khidmat, how to be of service because nature knows that Allah loves this creation. So they're here to serve this creation. With all the difficulty they endure, they endure it for love of Allah So they also show the best of akhlaq and character that when you burn the wood, the wood of course has a zikr. Allah says, for verily everything is praising me but none know its praise except the people of tafakkur. Why? Because the people of tafakkur their work is through malakut and through light and light is the great equalizer for all languages. You know that languages were a curse upon mankind that in the time of Nebuchadnezzar that they had tried to go to the tower of, of Babel. And they built a tower in which to fight Allah astaghfirullah. And they gathered all mankind from that area and went to the tower and shot arrows trying to kill the heavens. And Allah was entertained by their foolishness and as a result after they went through all their practices and whatever they were trying to do, Allah cursed mankind by giving them all different languages. By the time they came down from that tower no one could communicate with each other anymore. So it means that our language although blessed it's also a curse for mankind. It's what causes our division, causes our separation and it becomes the reality of the mulk. The physical world is a world of separation because of the virtue of its physicality it separates and divides and there's shaitan upon this earth is here to be the great divider that keeps separating people, keep making them to divide and more and more smaller groups. Malakut is the great equalizer because it has singularity. The world of light is singular, it's not multiple. Means the world of light, one drop of light, one drop of light, one drop of light is actually one drop of light. It's, it has no separation and its reality is that it's all singular, it ocean, it's the ocean of oneness. So it means that when they communicate and, and inspired from this world of malakut they can communicate with everything and be inspired by everything and Allah's creation is here to teach us and guide us. That's why we don't contemplate on Allah we contemplate on creation and nature and all our surroundings and when we elevate our contemplation then we contemplate on the best of creation which is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Once you take your practices of tafakkur and contemplation that you took a path in which to be nothing, nothing, nothing and how to connect with the shaykh. Now once you begin to practice and connect then you keep your heart connected. They show you what they want to show you at that time. Whomever comes to you in your heart if they are sending a signal then no problem. Your training is to connect with the shaykh, visualize the shaykh, ask to be with Shaykh Nazim, Shaykh Dagestani, they dress me with your fires. Whomever comes at that time of these awliyaullah then they have something that they want to inspire within you inshaAllah and you, you take it from there. 
we give the basics and the understanding, the rest is up to Allah to do whatever He wants. We're merely just the cable company, we come to teach people how to connect. Once they connect, Allah will do with His servant what He wants to do with the servant, inshaAllah. <coughs> Sayyidi, the sensitivity that somebody has for the opposite gender, does it relate to energy? If bad, how to prevent it? And if it's a good energy, how can someone know it's a positive energy? I don't understand that, that question. It means that if they're around someone and they feel sensitive to them or they feel uh, attracted to someone or I, I'm not clear on what that, that question is. You can read it again. <laughs> uh -huh. you can read it. No, I think whoever asked it has to just maybe define it a little bit more that everybody has a positive and negative energy and uh, you have to be careful of any type of sensitivity to energy and, and until you advance your training, don't use your energy for dunya. That in, in our trainings for tafakkur and contemplation, you use your connection only for akhirah, that I'm going to connect with the shaykh, I'm going to feel the presence of the shaykh and I want to go to Rosa Sharif, I want to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and I want to go into the oceans of power. Ya Rabbi, I'm not coming to see anything, dress me from your ocean of power, dress me from your lights, that grant me this light and make me to make tawbah. So everything is about akhirah. They don't use the connection and say, okay, I'm now in the presence of Rosa Sharif and I want this lady, I want this man, I want this job, I want this money. You don't ever use this spiritual connection for physicality and for dunya because every answer you get from dunya will be completely off. They actually don't respond and it's just your imagination now beginning to take off. That, oh, I went to Rosa and I saw the Rosa Sharif and then I was asking about this person and, and the answer was coming back, yes, yes. No, it's actually everything shuts off because you use this connection for your personal benefit and for your dunya and as a result it shut off. And now you're just listening to yourself and your hawa and Allah describes, have you seen those who make their desires their Lord? The ayat al kareem is about a high level of training that when you train you're using it only to reach to Allah's satisfaction and Divinely Presence. You don't use the spiritual connection for your physicality, that's why you have a guide. That you ask the guide that, what should I do for this dunya, what should I do for the work, what should I do for my relationship. But you don't want to use the spiritual connection. Otherwise then everybody thinks that, oh they meditate to make a connection to get the lottery numbers and that's not allowed. So uh, when people use it for dunya they're just listening to themselves and many people then start to imagine and hallucinate and, oh I saw this and the shaykh said, yes this is for me, this one is for me, this is… and that's not correct and it's all the imaginal world and that's a danger, inshaAllah. The person uh, um, clarified and said, he instead of sensitivity they meant attraction. Mm. Yeah, that has to be very careful that once you start to use energy, again that's what we just answered, is that use your energy for connecting to the heavens and heavenly energies and don't use it for, for the material world and physical world. Because there can be a danger in directing your energy and your heart instead of towards Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad you begin to direct it on each other. And that can be very mis, mis or deceiving and cannot be correct and many different difficulties can come from that. So we have to just be very careful, that's why the guidance is always through physical guides that when I want to get a job I ask the shaykh, shaykh what should I do and what type of work should I do and please pray for me this is what I'm trying to do. Those types of guidance have to be physical. I'm thinking about getting married what should I do and how should the person be and is this person good for me or that one is good for me. 
make it to be in the physical realm, don't use your spiritual connection and so I'm very attracted to this person's energy, this person's attracted to me, oh but there's something you know, it just, it just gets very complicated and it's not the connection is not based on that. <coughs> Sayyidi, <coughs> Sayyidi, in case we choose to do our muhasaba and istighfar by written letters, should we keep them or burn them? Watch that. Muhasaba and istighfar. You do your accounting, means to write your your accounting of all the people, places and things that you don't like and why you don't like them based on you, not why you don't like them because of them but I'm not interested in cleaning other people's graves, I only need to know about my grave. When I start to do my muhasaba, I write all the people, places and things and why I don't like them based on me so that I can identify my sickness and then when I make my istighfar on those characteristics, my characteristics become more clear to me. There's no need to burn that book, that's your journal so that you can go back and see that uh, two, three years later you're still working on the same character or you have developed yourself to a higher level in which you control your anger, your bad desires and bad characteristics. <coughs> Sayyidi, are tunes permissible in Islam and drums which is also a music sound, is it permissible? Is what permissible? Tunes, Tune, tunes drums, 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 music sound. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a funny subject that, that many people keep bringing that up. If you're listening to these nasheeds then you think that we're doing something haram that's, that's not a very good question to ask the shaykh. You're listening to all the haram, then no that you can't think like that. But if you want an understanding when you say music, are you listening to hard rock and dance music? That's music. But if you're listening to praise. Allah wa bihamdi for verily everything is in praise of the Lord and Allah's praise is the praise of the Divine but even more specific in Allahi wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala Nabi Even the highest level of zikr is Allah's zikr and Allah's zikr is salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad and everything for those whom their hearts are open, everything has a sound, everything is in existence by its praise. So don't say that praise is music and that the instruments that come to bring the praise and to bring the sweetness of that praise is a form of worshipness. Means when you bring people to the love of Allah and through the sweetness of your voice, the sincerity of your heart, these instruments that increase the person's love for Allah it becomes all a form of worshipness in which to praise and dhikrullahi akbar means the greatest that insan can do is the dhikr of Allah praising Allah showing Allah our thankfulness. So these are acts of love and muhabbat. These are like the praisings of the bird, if somebody comes and says that praise, oh praise is not allowed then you're saying that this world is silent with all its birds and all its crickets and all its nature, just walk into nature and it's a symphony. Every type of creature has its own praise to praise Allah At the fajr time the birds if they're singing before you they prayed fajr before you and you missed your fajr. And at maghrib time if they begin to sing you miss the maghrib, means they're even more attentive than us that they're praising Allah at the rising, rising of the day and the setting of the day. Means they understood uh, mashariq wal maqarib, 
and they understood the rising of power and the setting of power. So it means that the praise is an immensely deep reality and our Prophet's name is the most praised, Muhammad, the, the, the root of Sayyidina Muhammad's name is Ham. And we are the nation of praise and the nation that has the most praised in creation means has immense, immense realities. When someone wants to reduce it and that's that crazy madhab of people, they want to reduce it and say music. No, this is not the same as a rock band, this is not the same as a dance club. Those same madhab is the ones whom are inviting all of these forbidden rock bands now into the areas and the sacred areas of Hijaz. They have concerts now for Beyonce where they didn't allow zikr, they didn't allow praising, they didn't allow even the mawlid of Sayyidina Muhammad It's just the hypocrisy of what they taught. That inshaAllah bring down their hypocrisy, their aqeedah, their belief, everything to be thrown in the trash. Sayyidi, are UFOs jinns or are they from angels? Oh, we can't hear Sayyidi, what? Can you hear? Oh, we, we got cut off? Oh, it's working, Sayyidi. Are we working? Yeah, are UFO jinns or are they from angels? Depending upon if you arrived on one. <laughs> the, the jinn nation is a creation that is very powerful but very subtle because they lack a form and the lack of their form makes them to be exposed to many elements, many elements that can burn and harm them. Uh, by their nature they have to shield themselves from being exposed. Allah gave us a form. And this form is a shield that, sh that hides our identity and our reality which is our soul. The soul has power, not the body. So then Allah put this precious soul inside this form and the form is a protection. Because they lack the form, many times they occupy different creatures so that they can be inside that form and enter and free in their movement. They can enter inside of nature, trees and different elements within nature and these different vehicles in which they can travel for those vehicles. Whether they're traveling through the dimension of the earth, through the oceans, through the skies or interstellar from different planets and different galaxies. They use that as a means in which to move to shield their physicalities which are of a exposed nature. And their misunderstanding in the western world is that they keep calling these aliens, aliens as if they're something far away. But these are the jinn and they're in the homes of everyone and they molest everyone. It's not just the abductions, everybody is being molested by them because they're in their homes. And that's the dimension in which they operate. The greatness of Islam and the greatness of what Sayyidina Muhammad brought was knowledge. And Prophet brought this knowledge of this dimension, brought the protection from this dimension, brought all the realities about this dimension as a safeguard for the nation of Islam and the nation of realities. So that we would understand these realities and we would understand Allah's creation. So alhamdulillah that Allah gave us to be under the flag of Sayyidina Muhammad and many of that nation they are in Islam and they are mu'min and they are practicing based on their belief and their love for Sayyidina Muhammad they look out for insan 
whom is of a weaker nature in their beginning phases of belief inshaAllah. <coughs> Sayyidi, how can we help other people heal with ayah or dua or energy? Please forgive me for my lack of adab. No, alhamdulillah, everyone's questions are very good, alhamdulillah, and Allah forgive me and bless you that we first, again we have to always give the answer that we first have to build ourselves. I can't give what I don't have. You know when they tell you on the plane, if for some reason this plane is going down in an accident, please put the mask on your child's face first. And the reason for that reality is that if you busy your time uh, fixing or put the mask first on your face then put on to your child, excuse me it was the reverse. That if you have a child with you they tell you that first put the mask on yourself and then put the mask on to your child. And the reason for that was that you have to and you can't give what you don't have. That we have to secure ourselves, secure our practices. Make sure that our energy is good, our understanding is correct, our connection and support like a lifeline is flowing to us because every single thing will begin to affect us. We are of a… an immensity of what we don't understand is that every sickness is from an energy world. Every sickness that insan has is based on an energy that is coming to them and their inability to push the energy away and the power of that negativity coming into their field of force and shifting and changing everything. If they don't build their spiritual practices, build their protection, build their understanding then everything will destroy them and that has the deep reality that if you are sinning and you are doing something that's not correct. And other Imams tell you, make istighfar and stop doing it. We've, we've taught before, that's like you falling into quicksand and somebody telling you, get yourself out and ask for forgiveness. If it was that easy, all this earth wouldn't be in continuous sin and in difficulty. So it means that Allah wants us to understand that when this negativity comes to you and this negativity overruns you and, and begins to influence you into sinning, into, into doing bad things, merely, merely asking Allah sorry and it'll end, it doesn't really happen that way. And that's why Allah describes, well, ittaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen, have a consciousness of Allah and keep the company of these truthful servants. Why? Because they are a rope from Allah and anyone who falls into quicksand they need a rope, they need a way and a means in which to a tawassul, they, they, they need a means in which to be uplifted, to be taken out of their negative energy. It means they need a means in which to be a, a, a quick infusion of positive energy. And these are the circles of zikr and these are the guides of light in which Allah make their reality to be from their soul and their light, it doesn't diminish. Their light is, is a light upon light in which Allah is the source of power that emanating from them. As much as they love Sayyidina Muhammad as much as they try to be of service to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad as much as Prophet is energizing them, sending more and more and more energy that go deeper and reach to them. So they're like lifeguards, when they go out and they broadcast and they teach, they're extending a light. When you connect with that light, turn on the broadcast, watch the videos, watch the, the teachings, read the books. These are ropes that are reaching and connecting you to that power source. That is the reality of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi ali radeem. There's no hawla and no quwwa, means there's no help and no ocean of power to reach you if you're not reaching from that source. 
Because that power it requires a tremendous amount of cleansing, of testing any shaykh's life when you look at how much they went through difficulty. You think just by saying something it reaches to you without all that testing and all that difficulty? As a result of all their testing, all their heartbreak, all their difficulty, all their suffering, giving everything they had away, doing everything that was called upon them, they reached and they become the people of hawla, they become the people of help and they are, they are connected to the source of uwa. They are, they are connected to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad so they are a rope of power reaching towards people. When these people hold on to that immediately they feel energized, all their negativity is like their battery is recharging. You know now they have superchargers for your phone that not only you can charge it through the wall but they have a fast charger where you carry it around with you, you plug it and two seconds it fills up the battery or literally about two minutes. What is that concept? Why are they supercell? And why did, what is that technology? You don't think Allah has that technology that their hearts and souls that they operate from their souls. They're like a super cell that in just a few minutes of sitting in their association they can replenish and recharge people's batteries, push away all their negativity, fill up their energies and give them more hope as if they drink from the fountains of life. So means Allah has immense rahmah and immense blessing. It's a matter of understanding and how to reach to those. Well, this question started off with helping others but first the reality was help myself, make, my, make sure that I'm connected and that I have this connection. Otherwise can you imagine if you don't have a connection and you go around trying to heal people, <coughs> you know the highest rate of suicide is in psychiatrists. Why psychiatrists? Because it's an exact example that they're going around helping people and they become the craziest people on earth because they don't understand what they're dealing with. They put themselves in a room all day long listening and dealing with the madness and sickness of people. So they sponge and they absorb every sickness and they go sick and they, they become sick. The second highest suicide rate are dentists. Why? Oh, because they're touching the energy of people's mouth and that's why the reality of a siwaq, nifaqi fi qalbi wa shirk al khafi. Why? Because what I eat and drink is an energy coming into my mouth. This energy is so fierce, so negative because it's going to go in my mouth to get into my heart. So shaitan wants to collapse my heart through my mouth. So then when these dentists are touching these areas of the mouth and the plaque and, and all of the, the contaminants of the mouth, they're taking all the negativity of insan and they don't understand and they become filled with negativity and then they want to arm themselves. So it means it's always an advice for people until you have something, the last thing you want to do is be involved in trying to heal people when you have not yet healed yourself inshaAllah. Sayyidi, someone asked me about online baya. He was confused as how shaykh comes to know about baya. Can you please explain baya via online and dreams? How can we explain to others that it's real baya? The bayah is for Allah through the prophecy and risalat of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's a command from Allah that we are renewing and, and we are taking the path in which Allah wanted for us. Ya Rabbi from what I promised you on the day of promises I'm coming with my nafs and with myself to take my bayah, take my allegiance, pledge my allegiance so that to fulfill my covenant that I gave to you Ya Rabbi and the covenant that I gave to Sayyidina Muhammad and the covenant that I gave to Ulul Amr. We made a covenant 
with these three realities from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum that what we would fulfill from the day of promises when Allah says, Am I not your Lord? And we said, Qalu Bala, yes Ya Rabb. And that's what we're here to accomplish that reality. So it means that the online bayah is not so much that the shaykh has to know and to reach everyone but that you have to know because the shaykh has already been partitioned his students in the world of souls. So your bayah is not for the shaykh, it's your bayah is to tell your own nafs for you. That's why they don't even need to do the bayat. Anyone who's with the shaykh is with the shaykh and the shaykh has them through the world of souls. And whether he knows them physically or only through their spirituality, that's up to Allah So the real deep meaning of bayat is something completely different. So somebody may be sitting in the company of a shaykh for years watching online and they say, oh I haven't taken bayat, are you thinking that you're not connected to that shaykh? that they were actually waiting for your big nafs to agree? If the world was based on that, we would already all be burned. This is Allah's ni'mat and blessings. Allah's not waiting for us. Allah's not waiting for us to, to put our nafs down and to make a step in the right direction. Means that Allah already gave this ni'mat, already gave this blessing. In the world of souls when Allah created the souls of these awliya, Allah created the students and said that these would be your students. And that's why Prophet described that the souls like marshalled, I don't know the exact hadith but like marshalled souls, the uns, a familiarity. Then in life you come across people whom you are very familiar with, they're like battalions of an army, means that you know this person. You know this guide, why? Because in the world of light that guidance has to take place first. It's not based on the guidance of dunya, it's based on who's guiding you on your paradise reality in the world of light and malakut. That's the world that's important, the association is in that world there's an association, in that world there's a continuous teaching whom been divided and partitioned to these different guides is from the world of light. Nothing happens on the world of form that comes new to the world of light. Means that everything first happens in the world of light. Every association, every reality, every relationship is already in the world of light with these guides. Then the physical world will manifest, if Allah wants it. Many don't manifest with their physical guide and it doesn't mean that they're not guided. Because in the world they're guided by that shaykh. So no, alhamdulillah it has a very deep meaning. If you read it online, it's for yourself. And this line of communication that they're opening for email and communication is a part of that reality that they want people to feel firm in their belief, feel comfortable in their belief that I'm communicating with someone, someone has acknowledged that I've accepted Naqshbandiya, that I'm accepting that Mawlana Shaykh is my guide, Shaykh Nazim is my guide, Shaykh Daghestani is my guide, Shaykh Muhammad Adda is my guide, all the shaykhs are my guides. They want the person to feel comforted by that reality. So then these ropes come out to give people a sense of comfort, companionship and that Allah is bringing them to be closer towards this reality in the last days. But it's not necessary and they don't have to even recite it out loud for people to make it necessary. They can have a Wi-Fi connection by just looking at the face of the shaykh. <coughs> Sayyidi, how can we start teaching our children to get into a routine of zikr and to balance their energy? As children are very vulnerable and their minds aren't stable, how can we teach them? Yeah, all our children are raised like that, that from a young age it's exactly that type of a sponge. You know they say from, uh, from 0 to 14 is the ye years of memory, that's the only time that they're going to memorize like a sponge. So when the child is small and sits on the lap of the parent doing the zikr, all our young kids are doing the zikr and they go home singing songs, singing praises, making salawats. 
because it's deep from the reality of their soul, they heard these in paradise. So they, they understand this reality, it's to raise them in this praise, raise them in these circles, raise them in these teachings, raise them in the love of these awliyaullah, love of Sayyidina Muhammad above all, love of awliyaullah, love of the, this way and the, the example of this way, it adheres into their heart. Now they may take a path as they get older where they go in different directions but as a shaykh or a guide or a teacher all our lives that's all we seen is that people come back and they're not random people. They come back and say that, you know I don't know why but I used to attend such a group or such a sound with my grandfather, with my father, with my relatives. So it's something that will be burned into their heart and then whatever course Allah has written for that child, they take that course and when Allah want to bring them back to guidance, it's deep within their reality. They understand the Mauli, they've seen the Mauli, they've experienced the Mauli, they've understood the zikr. So alhamdulillah it burns deep into the soul of that child and connects them to a deep reality with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. <coughs> Um, Sayyidi, how does one attain or achieve their seven heavenly names? We listened to Shaykh's video regarding this, wasn't aware of this until listening to the talks. Apologies if wrong for asking. No, alhamdulillah, it's not wrong to ask, but it's wrong to think that you're going to get them. That it's a lifelong process, that that was from the realities of the seven tawaf. The why Allah has us making seven tawaf around the Holy Kaaba because of the souls that are inside the Holy Kaaba. The reality of the souls when Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, that these souls when they're there Allah's with them. Based on that barakah and the immensity of that blessings, their souls are around the soul of Prophet Prophet soul is making tawaf around Allah and all creation is around that reality and that becomes like the spectrum of a light, that the outside spectrum and then you have layers all the way in. And that Allah wanted as a reality for the Kaaba and its reality. So it means that when people are coming for that reality they're going seven times because Allah wanted to address them from the reality of their seven names because it's held in trust by Sayyidina Muhammad when they come for Hajj, they come for Umrah, Prophet is dressing them from the barakah and the blessings of their names. And like a one atom, the center most powerful name in the Divinely Presence is in the nucleus. And from the outermost level of what their mother and father, if they were inspired and gave them a correct understanding of their name, from that outer level their journey is to move to the Lord of power, to the center and to reach their way of marifah. That's the whole concept of the tafakkur is who knows himself will know his Lord. Lord is in the nucleus and every time they're moving and trying to understand and learn about themselves their whole life journey is to know that reality. And every time they reach and they make their meditation, they make their contemplation how does the electron reach and leave the outermost ring and make a mirage toward the nucleus? An electron is a negative charge. So it has to receive an overwhelming positive charge from the center, right? It needs a, it needs a bolt of lightning from the sultan that when life comes, testing comes, something happens as a testing and the student has good characteristic, it's like a lightning that hits their reality and that lightning is coming from the center, the nucleus, from the reality and the soul and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad When it hit the student, it pushes away the negative force of their electron because the electron the only way it can come closer to the nucleus is it has to give away their negative charge, it means you have to lose your bad characteristics. If you want to know yourself 
then you have to give away your bad characteristic to make your mirage into the center. So as soon as that test comes and the bolt and the lightning hits them in their life, then their reaction and the way in which they keep their good characteristics, Allah is bringing them forward and pushing away a negative charge. As they move forward in their tafakkur and their contemplation that they should have had, then the shaykhs will begin to communicate in the spiritual realm what their names are. The outermost name of your reality in which your parents should have been inspired to call you or they'll correct that and give you a name. And then as you progress to the next level up then what that name is for you through your tafakkur and your contemplation and your connection. So it's not something given just for entertainment, it's given because the student went through their testing, went through all of their, their difficulties and as a result got to know themselves so that they get and draw closer to the Lord of Power inshaAllah. <coughs> Sayyidi, if you recite Qur'an in the home often and du'as, can't that discourage jinn from the mischief in the home? InshaAllah, they're more powerful than that if, if there's a, a problem in the house. The recitation of Qur'an, alhamdulillah, has immense blessings. The recitation of salawats has immense blessings. The meditation and tafakkur, all of these contemplations and learning about energy, learning how to keep your wudu, learning how to keep all your practices, all have immense, immense blessings. But uh, yeah, it's a bit more complicated than that. But they all have blessings. But to fight them off then requires uh, more training and more understanding. By making the salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad by you continuously praising, you are bringing the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad upon you and upon your soul. And the nazar of Prophet we said before comes with 10 salawats. That as soon as you say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa la ali Sayyidina Muhammad that Prophet will begin to make 10 salawats upon your soul and there's no time in the world of life. So what does that mean? Well, what, what are the salawats of Sayyidina Muhammad upon me? And awliyaullah come to teach us that he's going to be sending you the lights of Holy Qur'an upon your soul. So then these salawats brings not only the presence of Prophet brings the light in which he's going to dress my soul from that reality. And then I'm going to praise more and he's going to dress more and I'm going to praise more and dress more until these Nat Sharif and all these salawats that, how I got raised to this praiseworthy station when I'm nothing and no one. And the only way I got raised was through this love of Sayyidina Muhammad because the immensity of that station and that reality, that by praising and loving that reality, his love raises the servant to that reality and dresses them from these beautific stations and beautific uh, energies. Those beautific energies and those beautific stations are what push away every difficulty, every sickness, every type of badness. So when Allah lets, lets the testing begin and difficulty to come around the servant, He's hoping that the servant is running in the right direction. And that direction that is right for Allah <coughs> the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's the reality of A'udhu. When Allah is saying, A'udhu Billah that learn how to seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan, what's the refuge of Allah It's the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Seek refuge in those whom are already in the protection of Allah Who's the most protected? Is Sayyidina Muhammad So means run into the heart of Prophet run into the soul of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad How? By salawats and by loving, is to love you more than I love myself. If I love Prophet more than I love myself and look how nice I take care of myself, 
Means that I would be praising and making salawats and thinking of ways on how I can show you my love, how I can show in this world by my money. I can give, I can do everything, I can be of service, I can spread the word of that love, I can post the, the, the images and the calligraphy and all of the realities and the teachings of that, of that love. So much so that I do it so much to get the attention. And that's all that they want is they want the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why, that's why these Nat Sharif are teaching that they lived a life in which to raise the magnificent status. They do a mawlid and they do a mawlid in the grandest that they can, why? To get the attention of Prophet in a world in which everything else is magnified except that reality has the most benefit and most blessings. InshaAllah inspire us all to do good Ameen. and to increase the goodness within our lives. Ameen. That love of Sayyidina Muhammad the immensity of that blessings inshaAllah. <clears throat> One sec, let me… Where's the… InshaAllah we do the, the bayah online to Naqshbandiya. For all those who are watching live please also that the New Muhammad website, that go to the website, anyone who has questions that help me at nurmuhammad.com, N-U-R Muhammad, N-U-R-M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D.com, uh, the guys will post it on the YouTube. That contact, ask questions, keep that relationship open, anybody coming in from the UK and different parts of the world if you can put on, on the comment section, it'd be wonderful to know that the show in the UK on uh, British Muslim TV is airing broadcasting, how do you like the show, how do you like uh, what's happening uh, out in the UK so that we can build that audience up inshaAllah. And we'll do the bayah online to Naqsha Bandiya inshaAllah, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Inna Ladina Yubayyunaka Inama Yubayyuyun Allah, Yad Allah Ifauka Aydihim. فَمَنْ نَغَضِينَ مَا نَيْغُونُ نَفْسِي وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِهَا أَحَدٌ اللَّهِ اللَّهُ سَنِيْتٌ أَجْرٌ عَلَيْهُ اللَّهُ فَسَيْتٌ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا رَضِينَ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّا وَإِسْلَامِ دِينًا وَبَسَيْدِنَا مُحَمَّدٌ صلى الله عليه وسلم ورسوله والنبي وبقرآن كتابا والله من نقول وكيل وحمد لله رب العالمين وقبلنا بسيدنا سلطان النوني مع شيخ محمد نازم حقاني شيخنا ومرشيدنا ومعنى شيخ محمد عاد شيخنا ومرشيدنا ومعنى شيخ الشام كمان شيخ عدنان كمان والله ما نقول وكيل الله 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 حق الله الله حق الله 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 حق حق يا ربي إلى شرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعليه وصحبه الكرام ولا مشاكينا في طريقة نشبندية خاصة وهم ذلك غوت قلي كشان نشبان محمد ويسع البخاري سلطان أولي الشيخ عبد الله فايز الداغستاني سلطان أولي الشيخ محمد نازم حقاني مولانا الشيخ شان كباني الشيخ عدن كباني الشيخ محمد عادل مولانا خالق الخجدواني سال زمان سيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام روح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سبق السدي سيدنا عمر سيدنا عثمان Imam al Hassan is Salam Hussein is Salam Sidna Fatima Tizar is Salam. Was Sayyidina was Sadatina was Sidaqeen al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.